peaceful Eden that like a bouquet floats on the blue Atlantic. Madeira is usually spoken of as though there is but one island, when in reality it is the largest of a group of volcanic islands, the others being Porto Santo, the Desertos and the Salvages. They belong to Portugal, about 400 miles off its coast and were discovered in 1418 by a Portuguese traveler named Zorga who landed on Porto Santo and then one year later on Madeira. The lack of old buildings is disappointing when one remembers the wealth of the early Portuguese nobles who were the early settlers. Funchal is the capital and largest city and is one of the most interesting ports in the world. Almost before the anchor is dropped, the steamer is surrounded by a flotilla of bumboats loaded with wares. Under the ship's sides and scuttling about are scores of these craft, the natives yelling at the top of their voices. Among them are the tiny eggshell boats of the swimmers, black-haired fellows with shiny olive-colored skins. They float and pose upon the billows or squat at the edges of their little craft waving their arms and blending their clamorous shouts with the wrangling voices of the trade people. Toss a coin overboard and a dozen forms plunge into the sea to contest below the surface for the coveted prize. The Madarins are world famous swimmers and divers and the daring feats they perform in the water can nowhere be matched. Each one seeks to attract the coin tossers to himself and to drown out his rivals by his own shouts. And the result is Bedlam. <laughs> On the shore are found the stones which have been used for hundreds of years for paving the streets of the towns as well as road making throughout the island. These stones are small with rounded tops and only native Madarans can walk on them comfortably. It is a choice between attempting the stride of a giant or the gait of a cat. One thing can be said, these roads will last forever. The Bullock Carro, that quaint sledge so characteristic of Madeira, has for centuries been the chief passenger vehicle of Funchal. Riding in one is an experience one never forgets. You jolt and jar over the stone streets, and to the shouts of the driver is added a most aggravating sound, like a pencil squeak on a writing slate. When speaking of Madeira, one is reminded of the beautiful needlework, which is one of the island's chief industries. Nowhere in the world will you see such beautiful designs in embroidery, from large dinner cloth to small doilies, and every piece is handmade. Viewed from the sea, Madeira affords a pleasant scene. The whole district is studded with pink, yellow, and white houses called quintas. Once in a while, you see an old house with a 15th or 16th century date, or a coat of arms cut in stone over a gateway. It is fiesta time, and Funchal is crowded with visitors from the outlying islands. The native costumes are quaint. Country women wear their colored kerchiefs on their heads, bright colored skirts, and flat-soled moccasins. But unique of all are the curious conical-shaped woolen caps worn by the wealthier class of peasants from the island of Porto Santo. The Madeiran loves his fiesta. He is easily amused and is a notable holiday maker, extracting the greatest enjoyment from the simplest of entertainments. Here is a group of peasants drinking some of the celebrated Madeira wine. Note the musical instrument. One of the members of the party is playing. Let's listen in and hear this curious instrument. Madeira is often referred to as the flower garden of the Atlantic. Nowhere in the world can one find flowers growing in such profuse abundance 
and the flower woman makes a charming study for the artist. The farmer here handles his produce by manual delivery, everything direct from the farm. Groceries are delivered by the young boys of the town. The milk by the milk boy with his can slung over his shoulder. In a magical ascent of half an hour, this mountain railway displays to the traveler a glimpse of every sort of scenery, from town to hamlet, from garden to forest, from valley to mountain. Somewhere along this route lived Columbus, who married his schoolgirl sweetheart, daughter of the first governor of Madeira. Here, in this peaceful bit of the world, he studied navigation. Here he dreamt of a water route to the Golden Indies. Have you ever tasted Madeira wine? It's famous the world over. The wine industry has been Madeira's main source of income for over 400 years. Golden-hued, black, rich amber, straw-colored and white grapes are used to make these wines. American oak is mostly used in making the wine casks. The wine is aged in these casks in specially built cellars called estufas. Each year's vintage is stored in different compartments which are provided with double folding doors, the inner doors being coated with lime. Once a year they are opened and the wine sampled to note the aging process. The best Madeira wine is aged 12 years in the wood before it is bottled. There is a contagious leisure and contentment pervading Madeira, and the essence of placid traveling is a ride in the reed, or the hammock, used extensively by visitors to Funchal. Boarding one calls for no little dexterity, if you want to retain some measure of grace. The bearers are mountaineers, wiry and athletic, who think nothing of carrying a passenger for miles, uphill and down, over the roughest and narrowest of roads. It takes about half an hour to ride up to the mountain peak, but the trip down is made in fast time. For the return voyage, you use a quaint toboggan, a low, wide-cushioned wicker chair mounted on runners with two white-clad men in charge. You start off sedately enough, but that is only the beginning. You soon gather momentum. The slippery surfaces of the cobblestones are as smooth as ice. The way is clear, and down you go. You are so occupied with hanging on and holding to your breath that at the end there remains but a vague and jumbled impression of high walls covered with plain red, purple, and orange flowers, a faraway town, and a dazzling sea. Thrills are not lacking. Sparks fly from the heated runners. You are making straight for a wall. Nothing could save you. And lo, you are safely around the corner. You shoot like a rocket down another straight run, and it's all over. For exhilaration, nothing can equal it but a bobsled run at Lake Placid. Sea days again, and Madeira just a pleasant memory. But there remains a desire to return again someday for a longer stay in this lovely isle, Pearl of the Atlantic.